Well, I finally, uh, this year, I think we're we'll beginning to get together a little bit. I don't know whether it's mainly just playing Kansas City and everybody got mentally ready to play or whether or not it's just time of the year that we're finally beginning to gel just a little bit. I think that uh, our passing game looked real good, and the reason being the linemen picked up the dogs real well and did a tremendous job of blocking. So it's not just uh, the quarterback getting the ends, it's also the help up front. True. Now, going to Denver this weekend, you're playing in a, well, they say the Mile High City. The altitude we go from approximately sea level to 5,000 feet. You as a flanker have to run a lot of a lot of pass patterns, some of them rather long. Do you notice the difference? Well, I'll uh, say told us yesterday that it, it, it's not supposed to bother us, but I think it does bother me a little bit. I, for some reason, I just can't seem to get enough oxygen into my body, and I get real tired and get tired a little more quickly, I guess, than, than you would otherwise, I feel like. I know that I can run two or three long patterns, and then I have to rest a little bit before I can go again, and usually I don't have to do that. Well, on those two or three long patterns, you just catch two or three passes, and then they let you rest, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, we hope so, too. Thanks, Lance. Thank you, Lyle. Well, actually, Lyle, we get ready to make s some sort of defensive call. Uh, this is determined by several things. Uh, for example, the position you are on the field, the, the time left in the quarter or the half, uh, the personnel that you have in there, and... Uh, what the, what the uh, offense is running at that particular time. And we have a, several different defenses which we can call. Uh, for example, let me, uh, let me give you an example. We, first of all, we tell our line what to do. Uh, I might call a stunt, which would tell our line uh, the technique that they are to use and uh, as to which direction they are to go, left or right. Uh, then I might say uh, 30E cover one double. The 30 would designate the position of the middle linebacker. The E would uh, tell you what the other linebackers do. And uh, the one double would give us a coverage uh, that the deep backs and the linebackers will uh, follow. How many defensive uh, plays would you have, say, or uh, setups in, at the end of the season or toward the end of the season? Well, actually, we have probably four or five basic defenses, but we can uh, add to these by uh, certain calls. For example, we could tell uh, a linebacker to come in uh, by uh, using maybe a number or a letter, and uh, we could also tell our deep backs to change coverage yet to uh, protect against one particular receiver on a different uh, play. So it becomes a, a multiple defense. Right. Uh, innumerable almost, aren't That's it? right. It, it's, uh, you can use any number of defenses. Speaking about a particular player, Cookie Gilchrist uh, is a particular player. He certainly gets the tremendous publicity. I know he's, what, 6'3", 251. Right. Great runner, isn't he? He really is. Uh, you can't really overlook Cookie because of his size. Uh, I think he's probably, uh, if not the best, the second best role back in the league, that's for sure. <laughs> At least he's the best one you have to play against. Right, right? that's for sure. Chuck, I have the feeling, uh, being around with the, the club, that, that the team really has a, a winning feeling. Right. I think we've had a real good camp. Uh, boys are working together. I think we're much farther along uh, this year at this time than we were last year. And uh, overall, I think everyone is really looking forward to a championship season. Well, I certainly am too, Chuck, and uh, looking forward to a great year for you. Thank you, Lon. Now, out of the 38 players that came to camp with the rookies up here at Escondido, how many football players, college football players in the United States did you shall we say, cull over before you selected those 38 or... We started with about 1,800 at the beginning of their senior year and then cut it down to about 250 at the end of spring practice, then went up to about 300 with new names in the fall, and from that group we picked the ones we drafted and the ones we went after as free agents. Now, those you drafted, were they specific position players or were you just after football players? Period? Well, it's a combination of filling your needs and picking good athletes. We uh, are blessed in the American Football League by picking every eight players because we only have eight teams in the league. And we can do a little of both, whereas in a larger league with 14 or 15 teams in the draft, you have to fill specific needs. Percentage-wise, what do you find over the years is the number of rookies who make a team? Our percentage is probably higher than most because Chargers have always taxied good young kids that we feel can develop eventually just need the extra year. We run about eight to ten rookies a year who make some contribution to the ball club. Al, as the talent scout who has, uh, shall we say, gone out and hunted these players and brought them into camp, what is your personal attachment, your personal feeling toward them? Well, I try and stay unemotional. I uh, am probably the person they'll turn to when they have problems because I'm closer to them. But at the same time, uh, I don't want 
emotion, the color of my judgment. I'm, and uh, you can get a broken heart worrying about each one of them. And the hardest part of pro football, I think, for everyone, coaches and ball players and talent people, is when you have to send anybody home. Because after football has been the major part of their life for four years in high school and four years of college, it's tough to be a has-been at age 22. But as I told one recently, it's better to be a has-been than it never was. Thank you very much, Al. Right, Ron.